So I've really enjoyed adding a lot of really cool rocks to my scene. I'll often use assets and stuff to fill out some of the rocks that aren't really central details, but when I'm trying to design one that is like the core essential rock, I like to model them on my own. And I'll often first start with looking at references on places like Unsplash, and then getting into designing some of the rocks over in Blender. I'm gonna kind of speed through some of this design process just because it's a little bit boring, frankly, to watch me sculpting over and over. But I wanted to talk about some really important things to keep in mind as you go through and design your own rocks. So here are some things to keep in mind as you work through designing some rocks. So this is the rock that I was trying to design, this kind of cool cliff on the beach here. I wanted to have like a lot of erosion, you know, so you've got the water lapping against this, creating really cool crevices and creases in the rock. This one, I, in particular, I really enjoyed this kind of almost like cave that you have here carved out of the rock face by, you know, years of water lapping against the rock face. It's kind of nicely smoothed out in places too, you know, kind of giving the hint once again of that erosion from water over all the years. And it's also got this interesting mix of textures. So this gives me a chance to really combine textures in an interesting way later on. So I thought this is a really great starting point to kind of use for the design process. And as I get into this, I first start by keeping things uh, you know, very true to real world. I did a lot more research. I kind of picked out some other rocks and stuff to look at too, just to see how, you know, the rocks are sculpted in real life. And, you know, I have a background as well in geology. Uh, so kind of tapped into some of the field expeditions I've done before to look up some rocks as inspiration. And I'll often go back to the real world examples quite a bit as I'm designing things and working through in Blender. Whenever I start out in Blender, I always keep things very simple first, just blocking out rough shapes with uh, primitives. I'll often start with just the default cube and duplicate it a couple times and kind of, you know, pull different edges or points, vertices up to kind of match roughly the shape I'm going for. It looks incredibly jagged, but that is fine because we're going to be adding some extra geometry to it in just a second. Once you've blocked out your shape, you can go over to the tab uh, over here that's in your object data properties. It is your remesh. And you can adjust the voxel size uh, that you want to go for. Keep in mind, if you lower this really low, it's going to slow down your machine because you're subdividing like an insane amount of times on the object. But once you actually do that remeshing, you'll have a lot more geometry to work with when you're going over to sculpting. So when you're sculpting, one of the first things I like to do is actually smooth out some of those really hard seams. Like, so if I go back a page, you can see there's some pretty tough seams as I've kind of merged some of these cubes together. So I'll often go through and just kind of blend those out using the clay brush. That's kind of one of my favorite ones to use. Uh, and I often will use a tablet when I'm doing this um, so I can kind of get like different pressure as I'm pushing in, uh, different strength. So I can kind of, you know, have a little bit more control. You can still do this with a mouse as well too, but with the tablet, you get a little bit more precision as you're kind of going through and sculpting things. But that's always the first thing I do is kind of smooth out those edges and start to give a little bit more uh, of structure to the rock too. So looking back at my example, there's some kind of like blobbiness almost up here as kind of the rock has almost like looking like ballooned out a little bit on the edges here. Um, so I wanted to capture that a little bit by sculpting that in with the clay brush. Once I kind of have a rough shape, I'll go back through and add a lot more detail, particularly with brushes, uh, these rock brushes and things that you can use to add in a lot more micro detail. And I'll talk about some of these rock brushes in a second. Um, I seem to have lost the slide where I've referenced this, but it's linked in the description, the brushes I've used to actually add in all these little rocky details. And for this one in particular, I wanted to use this as a challenge to add in a mix of textures to really add some extra realism to this. So you can kind of see places that maybe more water has been hitting over the years or maybe more exposed to the sun over the years just based on how the rock is directionally um, set to the sun. So some parts are getting more baked than others and kind of changing color over the years. Uh, so I wanted to capture that by combining a couple textures. And I used some free textures from cc0textures.com. And the model that I actually created here is available for Patreon subscribers in the description. So check that out as well. All right, so let's see this process in action here in Blender. And again, I've sped through a lot of this just because the process is quite repetitive as I'm just kind of going back and forth, brushing different parts, adding detail into places. But as I mentioned, here's the process of just blocking the scene out using a couple cubes to kind of frame up the general shape of this rock. Once again, I was referencing the image from Unsplash as I kind of got the design for this. And once I was settled with the rough shape, I remeshed it and began using that clay brush I was talking about earlier to kind of smooth out and blob out some of the edges to make it just look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more imperfect. You know, imperfection is often really realistic. Um, so adding in these details is really important to kind of getting a more believable structure. 
This is where I tapped into a lot of the rock brushes that I once again have listed in the description. They're from BlendSwap, really cool free set that you can add in and then just use a bunch of different ones to kind of brush in. My favorite ones to use are actually these crease ones where you can actually add in kind of little scrapes and stuff to the rocks. And when I was looking at the reference image, I noticed a lot of these kind of scrapes and stuff vertically on the rock, kind of maybe stresses from over years of the rock kind of getting splashed with strong ocean waves. And then I pulled a bunch of textures from CC0 textures once I had the rough shape of this rock and was able to actually move over to adding these in. It's always important to kind of have a general shape with some extra little bit of detail from the brushes to begin with, but then a lot of the texture work will drive the believability of your rock the extra way. So I scaled this up properly to kind of get it to where I wanted it and added in some displacement in cycles using the displacement and bump in the settings of the texture to make sure that I was getting that displacement. I toned that down quite a bit because like I said, I've already got quite a bit of displacement and modeling from the modeling that we did of the rock in the first place. But I can merge these two textures together using some vertex painting. I'll set the general color to red, and then I can use a secondary color to kind of paint on this secondary texture. I also like to use a little bit of noise texture to kind of break up some of the color in this rock too to add some wetness. And I can kind of paint this in using just a different color, like I said, combined in with the original texture to add in this texture in two different places. I kind of zoom around the model in rendered mode just to see what this looks like with some lighting from an HGRI. And again, I always look back at my reference just to see how this is coming together. I really like how this is looking. And so we can kind of start to add out some extra scene elements here to really make this a cool little setup. So for this, I was adding in a little water plane. I added in some sand also from CC0 textures to the base and added in an ocean uh, modifier onto the plane and just kind of made like a very rough ocean here with some ripples below it. This is kind of just a nice little scene here and I was trying to once again match that render. I brought in a sky texture here in the background, an image as a plane rather, and I was able to use that uh, in the background. Kind of sculpted a little bit around the sand just to kind of make it blend in a bit with the rocks. And then I brought in some extra rock assets that are kind of secondary assets from the B production uh, library. There's a couple of really good ones here and then I used the same texture from my main rock for these ones just to add some detail to the seafloor below. Again, those aren't the central details and I don't really wanna spend a lot of extra time modeling all these extra rocks out. So for those, I pull into an asset library just because they aren't essential details. I used a tree from the Botan IQ library to just kind of duplicate around to kind of match those little brushes that I saw in the reference. And this was pretty much the final image. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I can't wait to see what kind of rocks you put together. Catch you on the next one.